Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Sid's Little Corner of the Internet. This is Sid Sr. speaking. We're bringing you another Transformers review today. This time around, we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series number 70, B127, a.k.a. Bumblebee. So as we always do, let's take a look at that packaging. We'll move Bumblebee back. Bring that packaging in for its close-up. So you've got some nice CGI artwork there of Bumblebee with number 70. B-127, Transformers Bumblebee, got Transformers at the side, Takara Tomy, and then the Transformers Generations. Full body artwork on the side. On the back, you have your product shots, big screen inspired. You have B-127 there, Transformers Bumblebee, Cybertron Falls. Down here, you have a bit of a bio. As the Decepticons take Cybertron, Optimus Prime finds Autobot Scout B-127 and sends him on a mission to establish a base on a well-hidden planet called Earth. And down here you have all the warnings with the sad baby. On this side you have a close-up of that gorgeous head. He is a deluxe class. Up top, Transformers Bumblebee. And down below, manufacturing information. That's it for the packaging, so let's take a look at what came in there. First you have your sheet with all the warnings and all the languages, yay. Then you have the instructions. And the, the last thing that he comes with is this hand cannon, which we will get to here shortly. But right over here in the corner, as with all the Studio Series uh, figures, you do get the display base included as well. And in this case, you've got a screenshot or a still from Cybertron. And as always, if you choose to, you can take your figure, put your figure on the display stand and display him that way. I don't have enough room on my shelf, so unfortunately all of these go back into the box and then they go into storage. But for those of you who have the room, I think this is a nice display option. You could just set it up like that. I think that looks really good. Okay, so let's move that on out of the way. And we will bring Mr. B127 in for his close-up. So let's take a look at that head sculpt right there. Got that nice Autobot logo up at the top. Good molded in detail on that battle mask. And make your way down, you can see his robo pecs. And then you have good detailing in that crotch in the upper thigh area. Got some gray molded plastic with some gunmetal gray painted area there. And make your way down. And I, I, I know it's a big surprise, he's a yellow vehicle or a yellow robot. So you do have a lot of yellow on there, but you do have some nice gunmetal gray paint apps there. And on his arms, get a little bit of detail right in there. And there are his fists. And there he is from the front. And from the back. And he pretty much has the entire top of the car hanging off as a backpack. But overall, I think he has a pretty good look. I think this works well. So let's go ahead and talk about articulation on this guy. So we'll bring him in. The head is on a ball joint. You get a little bit of side to side. You do get a little bit of down. And if you utilize the transformation hinge, you get a little bit of up without it. And with it, you get a whole lot of up. So, and you can get a whole lot of back. So good articulation in the head and in the arms you're on a ball joint here your shoulders can come out that far you can do a full 360 you just need to make sure to clear the wheel and for the elbows you do get just over 90 on the bend and you can go a full 360 on that bicep rotation fists and wrists are in a locked position so no articulation there you do however get some waist rotation. It's not a lot before it starts interfering with this hinge for the backpack, but you do get enough for some good posability there. The hips, you can bring them out that far on those ball joints. You can kick his leg out that far and kick his leg back about that far before he starts running into stuff. So if you just cleared it, you could get the full gymnast out of him but you have to swing it way out. 
All right, you do get thigh rotation. And for the knee, you get, and it's a little difficult to see because of all the panels here, so let me move that out of the way. For the knee, you do get right at 90 degrees. And the foot is on a ball joint. So again, move that out of the way so you can see it. You're on a ball joint there. So you do get a good amount of front, decent amount of back, and some side to side for that ball joint. And of course, you could angle that at any rotation you want. So articulation wise, this guy's pretty good. He has a few limitations, but overall, not too bad. All right. So for his accessory, let's get you standing up, buddy. There we go. So for his only accessory, it is the hand cannon. And you just simply plug it into his right hand. And now it looks as though his hand is morphed into a weapon. It fits in there nicely and securely. It's not going to come out. It's not going to go anywhere on you. So as far as accessories go, eh, it's a little underwhelming, but this is a deluxe size figure, and it looks all right. Something worth noting is this is the exact same accessory that comes with Studio Series Cliff Jumper and the Studio Series Off-Road Bumblebee. So this guy, Cliff Jumper, and Off-Road Bumblebee are all the exact same engineering as far as transformation goes. B127 and Cliff Jumper, they are exactly the same other than color and the head sculpt. So transformation is the same, alt mode is the same, the way the body looks is exactly the same, the weapon's exactly the same. Off-Road Bumblebee has the exact same transformation and utilizes the same engineering, it just has some different molded components. And we'll see that here in a little while. So, but let's go ahead and get this guy transformed up. And in order to do that, take that weapon out, put it off to the side, and We'll just start straightening everything out because what we're going to do is we're going to basically pull this guy apart. So if you want, lift the head up now on that transformation joint and then pull the chest forward and then back here. You're going to pull the backpack away from the rest of the body and it tabs in in these two points in here. So you're going to disconnect that. And what that's going to allow you to do now, if you open this Part up right here as well. Now you can pull this backpack back a little bit and you can bring those shoulders forward. And what that does is it frees up a spot in there where you are now going to fold the head in. And once you do that, you can now, before you bring these all the way forward, you need to take his Robopex and collapse his robopex in so they look like that and then you can bring this chest assembly back forward and bring these shoulders in and now you've essentially created the rear end of the car so down here on the forearms you need to rotate the forearms 90 degrees just at that bicep rotation and you have a tab here that's going to correspond to that slot on either side. So what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to line that tab up and squeeze it in on both sides. And that's going to lock those arms in place. Leave all this as it is for now. This is gonna be the roof of the car and we'll get to that shortly. So what you wanna do next is for these leg panels right here, they're on a hinge that's gonna swing over. So if you just grab this like this and bring that forward, You can see, I'm trying to show you this, you're on this hinge right there. So you're bringing that forward like that and you can see how that's going to just align up right there. And then what you wanna do here, that exposes this wheel. So with this wheel, you wanna rotate that wheel 180 degrees. So it fits in the wheel well right there. And then this entire wheel well assembly will rotate around so you have that. All right, so we'll do the same thing on this side. You're gonna take this leg panel, swing that forward. Just be careful to clear this section right there. So swing that forward and then swing it down. 
get it approximately where it needs to be, and then lift this wheel up, and then bring this entire wheel assembly down. All right. Now, for the feet, you are going to bring those feet on this joint straight out. And when you do that, I guess I should show this first, you have this slot right here that's going to correspond with this tab. So when you bring those feet out, you're just going to align those two. Get that in there and then do the same thing on the other side so that way you should have those lined up like that then what you can do here is you can just connect the two feet and do your best to make sure that everything's aligned here in the front now at this point you have these tabs right there that are going to correspond to these slots right there. So it's just a matter of getting everything lined up and getting it pushed together. Do the same thing over here. Sorry, with all my fiddling of this, my arm Came back out of the slot, so I gotta get that back in there. Now I can bring this panel down, line that up, and squeeze it in. All right, so then you also have these two slots and tabs on either side that you're just gonna need to make sure that you have aligned up. You know, you don't wanna have a gap like that. You wanna just bring that in so it's sitting nice and flush. Have that on both sides. Okay. So for the roof section, now you're just going to spread that out. And before you do, this is worth noting, per the instructions, you do have weapon storage. Now, I'm not going to utilize this weapon storage because for whatever reason, I think I have a clearance issue, a tolerance issue. Could be that I'm fat fingering it. But on the bottom of the weapon, you have these two tabs right there that are supposed to fit into these two slots on that clear plastic right there. And then the, the main post is supposed to fit right in between. So for whatever reason, mine, when I try to put it in there, I can get it, but just the slightest touch, it's under tension and it just flies out of there. So this is a no-go for me. I've tried multiple times and I just cannot get it to work. So I will not be utilizing the weapon storage in the fashion that the instructions show. I don't do it with cliff jumper either. So, but all you do to continue with transformation is just align all that up. And then you're on a double hinge right here. So you're just gonna slide that on back and you have these little tabs, one right there and one right there that you're going to just slide underneath that assembly. And then this is where you just start squeezing everything together. You do have two tabs here in the front that go into the slots in the feet. So again, it's a matter of getting everything lined up, getting everything squeezed together. And doing your best to get everything flush and make sure that it looks as good as possible. So get everything nice and squeezed together. And there you have Bumblebee in his Cybertronian mode. And I've got a little bit of a panel sticking out. Again, this is very similar to some of the others that are uh, shell formers or panel formers. I could mess around all day with these, trying to make them perfect. But there you go. All right, so what I do for weapon storage in this mode, first of all, I, I don't normally keep my figures in their alt modes, but if I'm gonna keep the figure in the alt mode for weapon storage, typically it would be 
down in there and you can see those slots. But since mine doesn't work correctly, all I do is I take the weapon and I just kind of shove it in there with a little bit of pressure, just enough to keep it there and then it doesn't fall out and I still have my weapon storage. So it's not perfect, but it gets the job done and like right there, it just falls out. So well, let's go ahead and take a look at the details of this figure. Right off the bat, the first thing that I'm gonna say is I really, really don't like mushroom pegs for the wheels. I've never liked them on any vehicle. I like them even less when you have mismatched colors. So you have clear plastic up here due to the components that are being that it transforms up to, into in robot mode. And then you have the yellow plastic back here. And that just throws the whole look off for me. Uh, I'm not a big fan, so you know, I know a lot of people would probably just end up painting those pegs yellow, but I really don't like mushroom pegs in general. Other than that, I mean, I suppose this looks like a Cybertronian vehicle. I like the fact that they didn't try to put a cockpit in there or a driver's seat or anything that looks like a human go in there because, well, they're on Cybertron. They haven't met humans yet. Humans aren't going to be a part of their transformation at this point when they're in Cybertronian modes. So anyway, let's bring them in for a close up here. So there you have some nice molded in detail on the front. I do like that look. This looks like some type of a cannon so he could have an offensive weapon while he's in the alt mode. I have already checked and unfortunately he is not effects compatible. So would have been really cool if we could have thrown a blast effect right there. That would have been nice, but alas, we don't get to do that. And he has some nice molded in detail on the sides right there. Other than those mushroom pegs, I do like the looks of the wheels. Good detail back here. Would have been nice if there were some paint apps to make that pop. But again, he is a deluxe figure, so we're talking under 20 US dollars here. And then there is the left side. There is the top. And I do like this look. I think this is a sleek looking vehicle. And there is the bottom. So, you know, other than having some visible hands there, you can't really make a whole lot of robot kibble out on the bottom. So for comparison in this mode, I'm only gonna bring in one comparison and that is going to be his identical twin only in red. So this is Clip Jumper and you'll notice he has the same peg problem. But yeah, Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper, or excuse me, B127 and Cliff Jumper, identical molds. The only difference is the color and the head sculpt. And there they are from the back. Close up there. Let's do it like this. All right. And the bottom. And you can see I do have Cliff Jumper's weapon stowed away. Okay. So that is it for vehicle mode. And we'll, what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and we'll get B127 transformed back into his robot mode. And we'll bring in some other comparisons and talk about some final thoughts on this guy. So thank you, Cliff Jumper. Put you off to the side. So to get this guy transformed back into his robot mode, I'm just going to apply a little bit of pressure right here. It's going to allow me to pop that tab out and pop that tab out right there. It's going to lift this up a little bit. And then these tabs at the front of the car going into the feet are actually really snug. So takes a little bit of effort to get those out. But once you do that, then you can just bring this forward and then you can start to fold everything back in. So give it the fold, give it the fold, and then you're all accordioned up for the backpack. And just try to keep this angled up a little bit out of your way because when you pull these leg panels here, they're gonna wanna catch on this, so. Next thing you wanna do 
is just pull those leg panels out, put those tabs right there, and then you can clear those. Just kind of get them up and out of the way so you can get them ready for the next step. Now, this is just the way I do it. It's not necessarily the way that you have to do it. It's just the way I do. I like to get those cleared and out of the way. Then you can split the feet. Then you can pull this once you break the feet away from that. Do that on both sides. Go ahead and get those down and out of the way now. And then you can bring this wheel well assembly up and then collapse the wheel in. Do the same thing on the other side. Bring that assembly up. Collapse the wheel in. So you should have something that looks like that, other than the feet being all cattywampus. And once you have it in that position, then you can finish what you started back here with these guys. Bring the panel up, slide it down, do the same thing on the other side. All right. And then straighten those feet out. Now, per the instructions, you do have these slots right there that are supposed to connect with those tabs right there. They line up, but they don't stay. But this hinge right here is tight enough on mine that, that these really don't go anywhere. So they kind of self-align once I bring them to this point. And once you're here, just go ahead and bring these little flaps down. And that covers up that ball joint. And then you have the legs complete. So then you can turn your attention back up here. So for the arms, just pull them out of those slots right there. Pull this and bring this chest assembly forward. Pull the back, clear it out of the way. And now you're gonna to wanna to take that head and bring the head forward, which isn't the easiest thing in the world to do. Pull that head up out of there. And then right here, you're going to want to, <clears throat> excuse me, unfold his Robopex. So you have the Robopex out like that. Now that you have the head cleared, swing those shoulders back. And then you can put these tabs right into those slots right there. And that'll lock those shoulders into place. Fold this portion of the chest in and then collapse the chest. Bring the head down. Turn the arms 90 degrees. And there you have B127 back in his robot mode. We'll get him all straightened out here. There we go. So now what we can do is we'll go ahead and we'll give him his weapon. And then we will bring in some comparisons. So as I like to do here, I do have a couple of, com of comparisons that are just for fun. So they're not, obviously not going to be apples to apples on this. They're just comparisons that I like to bring in because I enjoy them. So the first thing that we'll do is since B-127, once he gets to Earth, ultimately he becomes Bumblebee. So... Let's go ahead and we'll bring in the movie masterpiece, Bumblebee, from the Bumblebee movie. So you can see those two guys together. I'll bring them a little bit forward so we've got a little better look there. All right. And then the next one that we'll bring in is his wave mate. So this is Studio Series number 71, Dino. So these two were released in the same wave. So just wanted to bring him in so you could see them side by side. All right. And next, now we'll get into the other figures from the Bumblebee movie. So we'll bring in the Studio Series Off-Road Bumblebee. 
and this is the one I was mentioning earlier, where these two share the same engineering, They're, it's the same transformation, it's just different panels that make up the body just to give him a different look. So as you can see, different feet, different legs, head sculpt's different, the robo pecs, and of course, because he becomes a Jeep, you can see in the back, he has a few changes there as well, particularly in the backpack here where he becomes that Jeep. But other than that, they are essentially the same thing. Okay, and next we will bring in one of the adversaries. We'll bring in Dropkick in his helicopter mode. Next, we will bring in Shatter in her jet mode. And then we'll bring in Big Daddy, Optimus Prime, from the opening scene of the movie when they were on Cybertron. And last but not least, we will bring in the bot that took... B's voice. There's Blitzwing. So yeah, that's a sad day right there when uh, when this guy took B's voice out. But yeah, there you go. So just for fun, let's bring everybody back in for the family shot. So let's put Blitzwing back there. Let's put Optimus back here. Of course we'll bring B127 front and center. And we can bring in Shatter. We'll bring in Dropkick. And way back there we'll bring in Off-Road Bumblebee and I think that's good enough for now. So uh, my final thoughts on this if you have Cliff Jumper, this guy is no surprise. If you enjoy Cliff Jumper, then you know what you're getting into. Uh, same thing goes with the Off Road Bumblebee. I think that this was, frankly, a bit of a cash grab on Hasbro's part. They didn't do anything unique here other than give him a different head sculpt and a different color for an already existing mold. So it feels a little cheap to me. I'm not surprised. It's Hasbro's done it so many times in the past. Why, why would they change a system that works for them? They know people are going to buy them. So, that being said, I picked this guy up locally, paid retail for him. No way whatsoever would I ever pay more than retail for this figure. He's, he's yellow cliff jumper. So, he's got a, a, a pretty good sized backpack. And, yeah, I guess from a completionist standpoint, it helps you round off the rest of the Bumblebee Studio Series. But yeah, it just, uh, this is the third iteration we've had of this mold between Cliff Jumper and Off-Road Bumblebee. And uh, I don't know, it just kind of rubs me the wrong way. So ultimately, like I've said before, this is your choice. If you guys like them, there's nothing I'm gonna say that's gonna stop you from doing it. Me personally, if I would have had to pay more than retail for this, I would not have done it. So. If you can find him and you like him, pick him up. But gosh, I I wouldn't pay more than retail for him. That's about the best that I can say. So with that, I'm going to wrap up the review. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, as, I, as I say in every review, you know, we're trying to grow our channel. We're trying to uh, bring out new content and make content that makes sense for you guys. So if you're just tuning in and you've never visited the channel before, please hit that subscribe button because we are going to be kicking content out. We're trying, we're shooting for every other day uh, to bring out new content. And if you're watching on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. And if you're watching on rumble.com or the rumble app, hit the rumble button. And no matter where you're watching, leave us some comments. Let us know what you want to see. Let us know what we could be doing better. And uh, as we grow, uh, your input becomes more valuable because we're making this channel, we're tailoring it to what you want to see. So if it's just up to me, the reviews are going to be like this. Uh, but if you guys want to see something different, I need to hear from you. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up. 
Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Take care. We'll see you next time.